Audio channel my name is Tammy Doe and today's topic is gonna be about destiny what is destiny you're playing a, uh, a video game right and this video game is called the game of life and the game of life you're you're the player you're player one and so you get to pick your avatar and say my avatar's name Tammy well, the player gets to pick Tammy's family who's Tammy's uh, soulmate is who's Tammy's soul family is who what's Tammy's purpose and what Tammy's supposed to do in life, right? So Tammy, before Tammy gets into life, Tammy has a soul contract. So what is a soul contract? Well, before you came into this life, you made a contract with yourself. This is the lesson I'm supposed to learn. This is the purpose. This is my purpose. I'm supposed to do this to help the world. And in the soul contract, it says, if I steer too much off course, Please give me a wake-up call. And a wake-up call could mean uh, a near-death experience, illnesses, disease, cancer, car accidents. Something happened that shook you to your core that made you reevaluate your life and your life's purpose. And so everyone has their own soul contract, right? I don't know what my soul contract is, but I can see it unfolding as I go throughout life and then like, piecing everything together. So the rule of the game is the player can't interfere with the, uh, the avatar. So imagine you trying to control the player and the avatar doesn't move or it moves like however it wants to because the rule of being on earth is humans have free will, right? So rule number one player is- Player can't interfere. Players can't interfere. Avatar has free will. If you're playing the game and your avatar won't listen, the only time the avatar would listen would do be when they're in surrender mode. Let's say they're relaxed, uh, meditation, or whenever they get a little tipsy, right? Because fermented products and wine actually opens up uh, the, one of the chakras. Those in like California or um, Colorado where cannabis is legal, like it puts you in a relaxed mode. And, every, and you also have to be careful because in this game, there's dark and evil forces. And their goal is to try to latch on. The dark forces, whenever you're like, see your aura is weak, it is very possible that they can latch on or like give you thoughts that's not even yours. Or if your aura is weak, aura is just an energy field around you, right? And if you're walking around and your aura is weak, someone else's thought might be so powerful that you absorb it and you think it's your thoughts. So it's really important to have protection crystals. And that's one of the tools that uh, they, they gave us to, hey, if you need to protect yourself, if you learn about the chakras, different stones can protect your aura field and prevent any like dark dark entities from latching on or other people's negative thoughts from latching on. And I always refer this back because our chakras are constantly sending and receiving messages. So if you're around at like someone really negative, you feel it. And that's the rule. Uh, no interference. My soul contract says if Tammy doesn't get it after four or five times, I don't know what it is, like kill her off. I'll start over, reincarnate, and start over with a new life. And so now looking back at my life, so I was born, let's say, and by the end of my life, I'm supposed to fulfill my purpose. And there's gonna be milestones all throughout life. So if I, let's say, for example, college, I was doing pre-dental, like I knew in my heart, I hated it. <laughs> it was not fun. And I took all the like OCAM, OCAM um, all the hard science classes and like I was miserable. I remember it was like during my sophomore year where um, I didn't pass OCAM 2 and like it, I took it really hard. I was like forget this like I don't want to do it anymore. I'm gonna go apply to study abroad and if I get the scholarship like forget free dental like I'm gonna change my major. 
Like that was where, that, that's the crossover where I was at. So in college, I was like going way too off course, going pre-dental. Like I knew in my heart, that was not what I wanted to do. Bam, once, once uh, I did not pass the, o, uh, the OCHEM class and I actually applied for the study abroad and I actually got it. It's like, whoa, I took a chance and it, it worked. And so that summer, I ended up going to 10 countries through a semester at sea. And it's just, it was weird. I couldn't explain it. The scholarship was almost fully paid for. And I came back and I, I switched my major into business. Now, <laughs> college. When I finished college, I switched my major to business and then I ended up going to financial world. So I was a financial advisor for the last eight years. <laughs> Honestly, I did not feel that was for me to either. Um, just seeing like behind doors how how much corruption there is, and I'm not saying like advisors or anybody else, but it's not it's not just any individual. It's a whole system. And throughout, like just seeing how people game the system, or like claims, or just really stuff like that bothers me so much to a point where like, I, I don't wanna be in it. But the longer I was in my career, like, it was so much harder for me to leave. And so here I am like telling people how to plan for their financial, like I got my status, I got my office, I, I started my own business, but like in my heart, like I, I had no desire to be in it. And so lo and behold, two years ago, I was trying to figure out, I was like, oh, is this what I really wanna be in? Like it was a crossroad again. So here go, financial. I already knew it wasn't for me. Boom. I had a near-death experience. And I remember two years ago when that happened, I saw the white light, the, I mean, the tunnel and the white light. And I remember talking to myself and asking myself, oh my God, what is my purpose? Like, I, I don't know what my purpose is. Like, I'm not ready to go. And so here I am, like in the middle of like a speck, in the middle of space. And I was like, I gotta go back. Like, I'm not ready. Like, I haven't done what I'm supposed to do. I don't even know what my purpose is. And so I begged to come back. And so fortunately I came back. And ever since that day, I haven't stopped looking for my purpose. And just now researching, like being on the spiritual realm for like the past two years, like, holy moly, like this all makes sense, right? Cause I was going so, of course, like financial, like eight years, it was so hard for me to leave. But ever since that day, I haven't stopped searching for my, my purpose. And I think I found it. I think it's, <laughs> I, I, it's what I'm doing now, now. And I can tell you that ever since I started doing crystals and like being around what I'm meant to do, like I saw this in my dream. Like I had visions of name your, name your business, the light goddess is like, honestly, these dreams are coming to life. And ever since I started following that path, coincidences, synchronicities like all that happens like all the time and I'm <laughs> I'm the type of person like I don't believe in such thing as coincidences but when they're happening back to back to back we're to a point where I'm in awe like I, I had to take a breath like this is really this is really weird but like awesome at the same time and the more I go on this path the more synchronicities coincidences happen and I I stop questioning I stopped question. I already knew this is what I'm meant to do. And um, so there you go. When you are born, you have a life contract. So pay attention. Whenever you're feeling ill or sick or have an illness in your body, um, it could be terminal, it could be not, right? It's it all has to do with energy. And so each chakra represents an area of our life. And each area of our life is connected, it's connected to an organ. And each organ, like whenever you have you're sick in a specific area, go back to the chakra chart and take a look at which chakra that organ is related to. And all it really means is when you have, like to say when you have cancer, and I'm not saying this is for everybody, but this is a trend I'm starting to see the more research I do. Um, let's say you have cancer, and what if it's in like lung cancer? Well, lung cancer, the lungs is connected to your heart chakra. And if your lung is cancer, has cancer, it means like an emotion was there. It's, first it was a tumor, right? It was a, a, for you to pay attention to that, that area of your life to pay attention. Hey, this is the heart chakra. 
either you're heartbroken or you need to let go of something because it's really holding you back. And so your higher self is trying to say, hey, hello, wake up. There's something there, pay attention. And the more you suppress it, the more you resist it, just imagine it's like little bits and pieces of energy. And the more and the more you think about it, the more you won't let go of it, it's gonna build up, build up, and becomes cancerous. And so it's really up to you and your contract what you what you stated in your contract before you even came to this world. It's like, hey, if uh, if Tammy doesn't get this, like just let her live throughout her life. Like I want her to make it through. Or if Tammy doesn't get this, then after like five, six times, like she's not gonna get it. She's not willing to go in internal and like find her purpose and just kill her off. And so if you know Dolores Cannon is this famous hypnotherapist and how she cures people is she would put them in a hypnotic mode and she would, once the person is like asleep, their subconscious comes out and the subconscious would tell her, hey, like he's not letting go of this, letting go of this, like, or this is the issue, this is what they need to focus on. And I tell you, she's cured like thousands of patients uh, of cancer, tumors, illnesses, in just like days. And there's also a hospital in China called the Qigong Hospital where it's medicineless, where patients come in with tumors and cancers and the doctor, six to 10 Chinese doctors, uh, stand over the patient and says a certain chant and uses energy to heal the cancer. And it's 95% success rate. Like, how do you explain that, right? If cancer can be cured naturally, what are we doing, doing chemo and um, buying insurance? Or spending thousands of dollars on something that be cured with through energy or naturally? Like, I understand if you need to go do a surgery for like a car accident, you broke a limb or something, I under totally understand that. But if cancer is proven to cure with just energy, then what are we doing doing chemo? And after I started realizing, wow, like energy, this energy stuff is real. And if people can cure cancer just with just energy and focusing their intention, then our whole world is about to change. When start, people start discovering about how energy works. And I'm starting to really see that when I'm working with crystals. And that's just, uh, it's just so amazing. So pay attention whenever you have um, an illnesses. So remember your higher self or the player can't interfere. They can't interfere on the physical realm, right? Physically, they can't interfere. They can't talk to you. So imagine you're walking through life and you're trying to control your avatar, but your avatar like won't listen, right? The only time the avatar can really listen is when the avatar is like in a surrender mode. So there's certain things in your chakras that you need to understand and focus on these areas. So whenever, especially if you're sick, um, and this goes for everybody that has history of like cancer in their family, like take a look, what chakra is it tied to and what is it in that area that they need to let go? And that's the only way to heal or you can use like energy healing. And so I thought that was so fascinating. So your higher consciousness is trying to, your player is trying to move you around and you won't listen. And the only way you'll listen is through surrender. And surrender, I don't mean like completely surrender, but when you stop thinking, that's the main goal. When you stop thinking, the player can't interfere. The only way you can tap in is through meditation, being quiet, the mind, just being a relaxed state. And we'll go more into that in the next episode. And also, don't forget, humans have the gift of free will. Now, that has gotten us into a lot of trouble um, to a point where we actually are destroying our planet. It's gotten pretty bad where, uh, yeah, there's like a huge climate change. All climate change is, is another name for a pole shift. And we'll touch base on that in the next episode. So here's a general idea. What is my purpose? What is my destiny? I hope this makes Welcome sense. Welcome to the game of life. That's all I have for you guys today. Thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to click like and subscribe. Next episode coming up soon. Tammy Doe, signing off.